Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. I am very happy to be uh, teaching you how to make today the Annie Tote by Toby Stylix. How gorgeous is she? She is a very large handbag. Again, I am five foot two and you can see when she's on my shoulder, she takes up a lot of my side of my body, but uh, a lot of people love large handbags. Um, what the only things I did different in this one is I added in the piping. The piping is not, I got to put it down. It's too heavy. <laughs> the piping is not included in the pattern, but I do have a class on how to do piping. It just adds a little bit extra pop of color. Um, I just love these connectors, these decorative connectors on here. So in her, uh, in, in her pattern, she has the straps connected all as one piece. As you all know, I like my handles to flop down, so like this. So I adjusted it in that way, and I do show you how I do that in the tutorial. Um, you can make this with rolled handles if you want to follow her pattern or her instructions how to do that. I did it with flat handles, and I did the two-sided strap, which I do have a class on that as well. That is really... The only thing that I, oh, I did change how uh, the zipper panel is done, mainly because I did not have enough at this Robin's Egg faux leather for the 30 inch piece that it called for in the pattern for the zipper panel. So I do tell you what I cut it to in the pattern. I believe I cut them to 15 inches and I just cut four rather than two 30 inch pieces. And I show you what I do to get past that. Um, some of the features of this bag, as you see already, it's got the purse feet. It's got this really awesome shape. Um, again, it's, these connectors are just, I'm all about them. They're just gorgeous. And then it is a drop-in lining. So you can see how the lining sits really nice and tight in there as a drop-in lining. This would also be very easy to do as a birth bag. All you would do is leave an opening in the bottom and an opening in the zipper pocket and turn it through. You just have to make sure that you've done it in such a way that the straps can be out of the way or you can connect them later. If you have a really thick rolled handle on there, they're not going to, to bend over. They're going to be up high like this. So you would not be able to do it as a birth method that way, but it would be very easy to do it as a birth bag. Um, yeah, and it has two slip pockets and then the decorative pocket on this side. Um, what did I use for materials in this bag? This gorgeous baby blue is Robin's Egg Blue by Galaxy Customs. Um, the black faux leather is just black from Fabricville. My hardware is matte black hardware from Atelier Fiber Arts. Uh, interfacing wise, I used EB Fuse Light for all of my lining cotton pieces. And the pattern calls for Decaville Light as the main stabilizer. I actually did it with foam because I don't have very much Decaville Light left. So we went with foam. I am using the uh, Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. And in my bottom stabilizer, I used Peltex. What else, what else, what else? I think that's everything there. Um, Again, thank you, Toby. Uh, Toby Stylix for allowing me to do this tutorial. I do have a discount code that will be good for a couple days. I'm not too sure how long. Um, usually it's about five days for 10% off. So you can check for that down below. And I also have an affiliate link down below. If you want to get the pattern, go ahead and click on that. Um, all the money from the affiliate affiliate link goes into my coffee account, which is used to buy, um, equipment and stuff to better my tutorials. So on that note, if you'd also like to support my channel and buy me a coffee, again, that link is down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to making this bag. All right, so you're gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape, two number five zipper pulls, I'm using strap ends, and some purse feet. You will also need a zipper end or you can make your own. Okay, I went ahead and did my straps already. I did uh, dual colored straps. That class is down below in the description. And because I'm making my straps flop down, I also cut uh, two, four two by four pieces and I have four D-ring connectors. Okay, I'm also adding piping. I have my piping classes down below as well. You'll need your uh, slip pocket 
binding and your decorative zipper pocket overlay, your four large connector pieces and your four small connector pieces. I've edge coated all these. If you want to do that, that class is down below as well. Okay, you're going to need your two side panels, your two main panels. Again, I did four uh, zipper panel pieces here because I didn't have a piece long enough, so I did two or did them 15 inches each. You're going to need your bottom panel, your lining zipper pocket panels, your slip pocket piece. All these cotton pieces are backed with EB Fuse Light. Your two lining panel pieces and your two recessed zipper panels. I'm going to be using Pretty in Pink So Foam from Galaxy Customs. You can use any kind of foam or your choice of stabilizer. So let's make these connectors. This is not in the pattern. This is just because I want my connectors to be able to, or my handles to be able to flop down rather than standing uh, straight up. So I'm taking my pieces. I've drawn a center line down the middle. I am going to use some... Um, double-sided tape to hold this in place. If your machine does not like double-sided tape, please use clips. You're going to take the long sides and fold them into that center line. And then you're going to go ahead on each side of those folded lines, top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along here. And you're going to do that with all four pieces. Okay, so that is done. So I'm just gonna prep these for later. So I'm gonna just take a small bit of double-sided tape and place it at the bottom of the connectors. And then I'm gonna put my D-rings on and bring the, the two short ends together and stick them with the tape. Do that with all four and then you can set those aside. I'm going to take all my main panel pieces and I'm going to base them to my foam. All right, usually I would have installed my purse feet before the foam, but hey, this works too. So I'm going to find the centers of my bottom panel, the short sides and the long sides. And the placement of these will be one in the very center. And then the other four are one and a quarter inch up from the bottom and one and a half inches in from the short sides. You're going to mark that on all four of those sides. And then you will go ahead and install your purse feet as per your manufacturer's instructions. If you need a class, I do have one down below in the, the description. All right, so these pretty connectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some tape on the back of the small connector on the wrong side. You can do this if your machine doesn't like double-sided tape, just make sure you're keeping it out of the top stitching zone. And then we want to match up the tops um, nice and centered. So it's about a quarter of an inch in from the side of the large connector. And then just kind of eyeball it to where you think it looks good and adjust as needed. You want it to be nice and centered. And then you're going to go ahead on the small one and top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling my threads long because I don't want to have that ugly back stitched uh, stitch there. So I'm pulling my threads long, not going to back stitch, and I'm going to take this nice and slow and follow that line of the small. Uh, center connector piece there. This is very decorative and it will be shown and I'm using a very contrasting thread so I want to make sure this is as perfect as I can get it. I'm doing a lot of hand cranking, cranking to make sure that my needle falls exactly where I want it to go before I pivot. Okay, I'm going to take that first uh, long strand. I'm just going to pull on my bobbin thread there to pull my top thread through. Okay. 
And then when you're coming to the end, you want to make sure that your needle falls in the same hole that the first stitch started with. And then you'll have a nice seamless line. So you can see me doing a lot of hand cranking to make sure I get there. Pull those threads long. And again, tug on that bobbin thread to pull that top thread through and then knot those four strands together. I like to do three or four knots. And doing it this way just leaves it really pretty. You don't have that thick back, si back stitch section of thread. It just is a nice seamless line. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done one panel. I'm going to show you how I did that. So I've notched my centers on the top and bottom of my uh, main panel. I've also gone ahead and marked on the back three quarters of an inch line. This is for later for when we're going to do our drop in lining. You can do this at the end as well. I just find it easier to do it while the panels aren't attached to each other. So I like to do it ahead of time. So I have cut out on the cut lines of my pattern piece where the connector placement is. So I'm just going to trace that out with my erasing ink pen. This is actually a Tandy leather pen that wipes away clean. And then you also want to mark that little dot because that's going to tell us where we're going to put our connector piece. Flip it over and do the other side. Make sure you're using a pen or chalk that does disappear. Okay. And now I'm going to take some double sided tape. And I'm just going to put it into the center of those lines that we just drew. Again, keep them out of the seam allowances if your machine cannot handle the double sided tape. But this is really going to help keep your connector in place. So where that little dot is, I'm going to just put my tape just above that little dot that we drew. And that is actually, that little dot is where we're going to place the bottom raw edge of our connector piece or our handle, depending how you're doing this. Now it's so easy to get the centered because the top of those lines we just drew is the same width as our connector or our strap. So you can definitely uh, see that you have it placed nice and centered where it needs to be. So again, you're going to start where that little dot was, center it on and stick it down with the tape. Okay, and I've already gone ahead and I put three strips of double-sided tape here. Again, this tape here will go through um, uh, the uh, top stitch seam allowance. So if you have a machine that does not like double-sided tape, make sure you put your tape in the middle of the connector where it'll be out of the seam allowance. Okay, and then we're going to line up the bottom of this with that bottom line of those lines we drew and match up that blue, what I have is a blue in the middle there, the small connector should line up nice with the connector and the handle. Gosh, that's just so pretty. And then you're going to do the same. You're going to top stitch along the large connector with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, pulling your threads long and pulling to the back so you don't have that back stitch line. And you're going to do that with both panels. I've also put on my zipper foot here because it was a lot easier to get nice and uh, close within that 1 8 of an inch seam allowance as my zipper foot kind of glides right along the edge of where that small connector is. Pull your top threads through, tie it off, and repeat with the other three connectors.
Okay, so I went ahead and I just put in one rivet just to uh, hold my connectors a little more stability in place. And I put my nameplate on and I did that three inches from the bottom center. Okay, so now we're going to take our bottom panel we finished, put it right sides together with one of our main panels, match our center pieces, and clip it together. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to top stitch, we want to press the uh, seam towards the bottom. I'm using tape just because that's what I do. I find it holds it in place for me really well. Again, only do this if your machine likes double sided tape. And I am pushing the seam towards the bottom panel there. And then we are going to top stitch that seam in place through the bottom panel. I'm just double checking that my seam is staying in place. Then you're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other main panel on the other side of the bottom. Okay, so I have cut the foam out of the seam allowance on top here and I am just going to uh, let you know where I am going to place my piping. Again, there is no piping in the pattern, but I found if I measure down from this top part about one and a half inches and that's where I'm going to veer my piping off on each side, it worked out lovely. Okay, so that is all done. And now because I used foam and it's just based it on, I'm just using some double sided tape to hold the foam flat toward against my vinyl just because um, it's kind of floppy there. It'll just baste it together with the tape. And then we want to draw, uh, just like we did on our main panels, that three quarter of an inch in where we are going to be um, folding our edges over at the end when we do our drop in lining. Again, I find it just a lot easier to do this beforehand rather than when the bag pieces are all attached together. This just makes it a lot easier to draw. So I'm just placing, because this is nice and curvy, um, my three quarter inch line of my ruler around each section of the curve just to help get a nice even line there. And you'll see it'll fold over to that line later on. Okay, so now let's put the exterior together. So this is what our main panels look like here. And now we need to put on our side panels. So you want to find the center bottom of our side panels. Make a snip. And we've already found the center of our short side of our bottom panel. So that's what we are going to match with that line. And if you've done the piping, you can cut off your wings at this point as well. Okay, so match up that bottom, put a few clips in to hold it in place, and then match up the top sides, the top of the main and the top of the sides. And then evenly distribute the fabric the rest of the way. Okay, so that's all clipped together. So if I was going on my flatbed, I would just go ahead and stitch it right along here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. 
but as you can see here, I am doing it on my cylinder arm, so I'm going to do it on the opposite side. So this is the only time you're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance with your sewing. All the other seam allowances are a quarter of an inch. Well, besides with the zipper panel, of course, but for our main exterior pieces. Just want to make sure you're using a 3 8 here instead of a quarter of an inch, because if you use a quarter of an inch, then your exterior is going to be too big for the lining to fit. Now you can see I kind of have my finger going right along where my zipper um, foot is there and that's just me feeling where my piping is to make sure I'm not running it over. I have my zipper foot right nice and close next to the uh, piping there. So I'm just being very aware of where my piping is to make sure I'm not sewing through it and that I'm getting a nice straight line so I have perfect piping. Okay, and then I'm going to pop that out and just check my piping and it looks good. And do the same with the other side. Okay, so now let's work on our zipper panel. So you've seen me do this in many videos. You want to take your zipper tape and you want to fold them down 90 degrees like this on each side. And this is creating a stop for our zipper. And then you're just going to go ahead and baste it at the machine like that. Okay, so again, the pattern cost for a big long piece. I did not have enough vinyl to do the big long piece, but I could do four shorter pieces. So it gets the same same job done. <laughs> so from each end, I am making a one half inch line from each of the short ends. You'll do this with all four pieces. I chose to use vinyl for all my lining and my exterior piece here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we are going to fold our ends, those short ends, into that line that we just drew. And that is going to enclose our raw edges. You can do this with fabric as well. If you can't use tape, go ahead and just use clips to hold it in place. I'll show you one panel and then the other one I will do off camera. Okay, and then take one of them and I'm measuring in a half inch from one short side. And this is where I'm going to be placing my zipper tape. Now, this uh, where I've made this mark is on my uh, lining panel. Oh, and also on the back of my zipper tape, I'm just making a, a line. So when I go to put my zipper pull back on later, I can line that up to make sure it's on nice and even. So this is my lining panel. And what I want to do is take some double sided tape or you can use clips. So we're going to have our zipper tape and our lining panel piece both right sides up. And we are going to line that 90 degree angle of our tape right at that one half inch line that we just drew. And then we're going to take our exterior piece. Again, I'm going to use a double sided tape. You can use clips if you like. And we are going to put this right sides together with the panel, the, the remaining part of the panel here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and if it doesn't line up, you can see here I am just readjusting it because it's very important that our sides line up here. So you're going to go ahead and sew that with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and you will do this with both panels. Mm -hmm. I have my zipper foot on so I am getting a nice straight line so I don't have a wavy zipper. Okay and then what we want to do is press both of these panels away from the zipper wrong sides together. Again you can finger press this or if your machine can handle it like mine can you can go ahead and use double sided tape to get a nice crisp, nice crisp seam here. And then once these are wrong sides together, we're going to baste the bottom raw edge together and then top stitch the two short sides and the um, right along where the zipper is. Now doing it here, this seam right here gets really thick, so I'm just going to use my hump jumper to make sure my walking foot doesn't eat up my vinyl. And then repeat with the other one. Okay, so I just want to make sure that these have lined up right. So this is how I install my zipper. I have my handy dandy fork and I have the line that I drew on the wrong side of my zipper. And what it is is when I put this into my zipper pull, I want that line to line up and then I know that I have my zipper on my zipper pull on straight. Sometimes takes a couple tries to get that line to match up. But once it does, it's golden, and I'm just going to zip this up and make sure that my panels are nice and even, which they are. And then you can take the pull off again. Okay, so I went ahead and I did my two lining panels. Uh, the classes for how to do the slip pocket and the overlay zipper pocket are down in the description below. So I'm going to start with the panel I want to be my back panel, which is the one with the zipper pocket. I've marked my centers on the top. Now I'm going to want my um, zipper panel to have the curvy side going to the left for this back panel. It'll be the opposite when you do the other panel. And you want to put this, uh, the zipper panel right side up on top of your lining right side up. Now it's a little hard for me to tell which is right side up with my zipper tape being matte black. Just make sure you have it going the right way. Okay, so I have that. I want to make sure they're both right up, right side up. I have the wrong one here, so I'm going to switch it out with the other one. There we go. Okay, and then you're going to clip this to the top following the curve and baste this in place. Now you'll do this exact same thing with the other panel, but you're going to find that your 90 degree angle is going to be on the right side. And that is exactly what we want. That way, when the two lining panels are right sides together, our zippers are orientated correctly. Okay, so now we're going to take our top overlay piece. So the top, the curvy part where it's kind of coming down, that is the top. And just like we did with our sides and our exterior main pieces, we want to mark that three quarter of an inch line where we will be um, folding this down later on when we go to do our drop in lining. Again, I like to do this beforehand just because I find it a lot easier to draw this line when the pieces aren't all assembled together. 
So again, because this is curvy, I'm just using my one inch ruler here and following the line and adjusting to get that perfect curvy shape. Okay, and then once that's done, we want to take it to our exterior piece. I'm going to just snip my centers here. And you're going to take the bottom part of this. So you're going to think of it orientated this way, put it right sides together, and you're going to clip this in place. Now it's going to look like this doesn't want to uh, fit on here. Just work it around that curve. This is exactly what you want. Now you'll notice on either side there will be a slight wing, that is okay. I actually cut one of these too long and I just trimmed it off later on. But you do want there to be a slight overhang right where um, the ends meet there. So you almost have like wings on each side of this panel. As you can see here, I got my little wings, that's good. We're going to go along here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and do the same with the other side. Okay, and once that's done, you want to push that seam down towards the lining side or the bottom lining part there, the lining main panel. That's the word I'm looking for. So again, I use double-sided tape to do this. Um, you can also finger press this, or if you're using all fabrics, you could definitely take it to the iron and press it that way. Just very important, the seam is po uh, pointing down towards the bottom. And then we are going to go ahead and top stitch through that seam in place through the bottom lining panel part, right through this black part here. And then you'll repeat this exact same process with the other lining panel. So now you're going to take your two lining panels and you're going to put them right sides together. You want to match up where our uh, lining top band and lining bottom lining panels meet up because you want to have a nice continuous line. So that's usually where I start clipping them together. And you are going to clip together the two sides and the bottom leaving the cutout corners as is for now. Make sure your zipper tails are out of the way. You do not want to sew them into the seam by accident. And you're going to sew down these seams with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is what we have, and now we just need to box these corners. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to kind of pull them apart and pull the bottom seam and the side seams together. You can open up these seams if you like. I'm just going to nest them together. So I'll have one of the seams going to the left and one of the seams going to the right. And I'm going to use clips to clip those raw edges together. Okay. 
and then you're going to sew these with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And do the exact same thing with the other box corner. There we go. And I just put my zipper on again just to make sure that my panels line up good and they do. And I'm taking my pull off again. And now we're almost in the home stretch here, the fun part. So I'm going to take my double sided tape and I'm going to put it along that line that we drew on all the panels. Happy to say they all line up. Now I want these seams to be open. So I'm putting my tape over it in a way that it's holding the side seams open. That just will reduce some of the bulk as we are top stitching this shut. And if you don't want to use double sided tape, you can definitely uh, use clips to hold this down. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead. I like to start at the side seams so I know that they are nice and even. And we are going to fold the top raw edges down to that three quarter of an inch line. And what this is doing is creating a three eighths of an inch seam. Now, if you're doing this as a birthing bag, you would put uh, the exterior into the lining and um, this top seam you would sew with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, when you do a birth bag, or a uh, drop in lining, we're just skipping that step and this is taking that place of sewing that top seam. So you're going to do that on the exterior as well. So I've got that all done. I actually use clips on the exterior just because I have stuff stuck to the foam and I want to make sure uh, it doesn't pop up and I'm going to use those clips actually to hold the lining in place. So you're going to put your lining and your exterior wrong sides together. I'm going to match up where my center marks are here and on my center side and that is where I'm going to start my clipping. Now because we are doing a drop in lining we want to make sure that that folded edge on both the lining and the exterior are as even as we can possibly get them along that top edge. Again if you had done this as a birth bag you would have birthed it through already and then you would go ahead and you would get things ready to top stitch along the top. We are skipping that spot and jumping right to this top stitching. So if I was doing this on my flatbed, I would probably top stitch it from the inside and make sure my bobbin thread was really, really, really good, that my tension was good. But I am gonna do this on my cylinder arm, which makes it super easy. And we are gonna top stitch this shut with a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
so this is all done. I went ahead and put my zip end on. I installed my straps. Double check that everything was caught in the top and we're done. All right, that's it. That's all folks. See, she was not a hard bag. It's a very, very quick sew. I think I could probably throw her together after everything's all cut and the edge painting is done probably within four hours. It's a nice beginner sew. Doing a drop in lining is not a scary thing. Do not be scared of a drop in lining. I know I was before and I don't know. I'm just loving it. Of course, I do have a cylinder arm, which makes that just a teeny tiny bit easier. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up, like this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And again, if you want to buy me a coffee, that link is down below in the description. Anyways, catch you guys on the next one. Bye.